Ads heard during the podcast that are not in my voice are placed by third-party agencies outside of my control and should not imply an endorsement by Weird Darkness or myself. Stories and content in Weird Darkness can be disturbing for some listeners and is intended for mature audiences only. Parental discretion is strongly advised. People who live and work in remote areas know that sometimes too much quiet can make your mind race. However, some experiences stick with people long after they occur because of the degree of creepiness. On Reddit, plenty of people who live in rural areas or make their livelihood there share their scary stories for the rest of us to freak out over. We know that often strange people linger around woods, parks, and other desolate areas, and we've all heard plenty of the kind of creepy stories that backpackers experience. However, in this episode, the stories are more than a little unpleasant, because the people who suffered them weren't just out and about anywhere. They were at their homes, or doing their jobs. Imagine living in the woods and looking up from your bathtub to see a face looking back at you. Or imagine you're working as a forest ranger and come across a thumb nailed to a tree. Tonight, I'll share some of the terrifying real-life stories, stories that are the stuff of nightmares. I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Welcome, Weirdos! This is Weird Darkness. Here you'll find stories of the paranormal, supernatural, legends, lore, crime, conspiracy, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. Coming up in this episode, true stories of terror in the wilderness. Now, bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the weird darkness. Haunted houses, haunted hotels, haunted roads, Perhaps it's a good idea to move away from the city and the suburbs and live out in the wilderness, breathing in the fresh air, seeing animals scurry in your bushes and deer on your front lawn, the sound of birds chirping in the early morning. To some, it might seem like their very own version of paradise. But don't get too comfortable, because when you're out in the wilderness, who will hear you scream? And where will you run when something terrifying happens to you? Redditor Anon said, My husband worked nights, so I'd be alone on a huge acreage. One night I go into the kitchen to make tea and I look outside to see the moon and there is a face on the other side of the window. I scream and it wakes up my aging husky who starts to howl. Dude bolts. I call the cops and wait forever, locked in my pantry. Next day, my husband and I ride on horseback our whole property we find a small makeshift cabin on the northwest corner. We find stuff stolen from our laundry line and canned stuff from our kitchen. He had pinned up selfies in the cabin that he had taken while in our bed and sitting at our daughter's child-sized dinner table. Redditor KG Ranch said, When we first moved in here, I kept thinking I'd hear someone walking in the house while I was alone. It's a flood zone, so the house is on stilts, and you can hear footsteps when anyone walks across the floor. Of course, this is Texas, so I just grab my handgun and go see if someone had come in. Also, my mother-in-law has a key, and when she drops in and leaves things for the family, she sometimes won't relock the door. I kept feeling like I was going to walk into a room and someone would be there, just feeling oddly watched all day for a few days. My husband didn't think anything of it. 
And one night, he jumped out of bed, grabbed his handgun, and started going through the house, slamming all the doors wide open. He said he heard banging in the kitchen like somebody was going through our pantry. He was adamant that he had heard someone. Nothing. Doors still locked. My niece got home from her grandmother's house and a few nights later asked if she could sleep on a cot in our room. She's a teenager, not a small kid, so I asked her what was wrong. She didn't want to tell us because she thought we wouldn't believe her. She just didn't want to be alone. She said she heard some banging in the kitchen, and when she heard that or felt like someone was in the house, she'd see a man in the window of her room, so she basically noped out and came to us. We let her stay, and the next day we were all a little uneasy. My husband, a notorious non-believer in the paranormal, came in looking shaken and said he had closed her door after bringing her laundry into the room and a man had been smiling at him in the window. The windows on the house are almost 20 feet in the air because of the stilts that the house sits on. From Redditor, I'm going to just throw this away. I grew up in the middle of the woods in Louisiana. Our closest neighbor was 20 miles away. Our house was on a hill, and at the bottom was the creek that went through the woods for miles and miles. My grandmother would always tell us there were people living in the woods, crazy, inbred folks on some the hills have eyes stuff, but I always assumed he was just trying to creep us out. So one night, when I was like eight years old, I sat in the living room watching Pearl Harbor. My father comes into the living room and tells me not to move, that he heard footsteps and the back door slam shut on his way into the bathroom. He thinks somebody was in the house and that he scared them off when he walked down the hallway to the bathroom. So he leaves the house, leaving the front door wide open, which scared the crap out of me. I paused the movie and just listened to silence for a couple minutes. And of course, the guy is still inside. I'm staring out the doorway to the living room and see the top of a head peek around the corner, a head with a white sheet over it, cut and tied at the neck. I'm paralyzed, and even if I wanted to run, there'd be nowhere to go but towards this creepy-ass dude. He just stares at me for what feels like forever before he leaves toward the back of the house. The back door slams again. I just sit there and start crying until my father comes back inside. My dad tells me that as he rounded the corner to the back of the house, he caught the guy leaving out the back door. The guy sees my dad and books it down the hill. And then there's a gunshot. According to my father, my grandfather had been sitting on his porch next door and saw the guy walking toward our house. So he grabbed his gun, got back outside in time to see the guy running down the hill and shot the dude in the leg. The guy fell, then got back up again before my grandfather could take another shot and disappeared into the woods. By the time the cops show up, he's gone. They search, but can't find the guy. They do find a run-down sort of shack a mile or so into the woods, filled with nothing but pots and pans, so that was weird. From Redditor, Pedazzle When I lived way out in the middle of nowhere, Australia, nothing but desert outside, nearest neighbors were about 10 kilometers away. Our place was at the end of a long dirt road with only our house, no others, so no one came down there unless they were specifically there to visit us. I was taking a bath one night, look up and see a man's face staring at me through the window. Freaked the hell out, got out of the bath, robe on, etc., and told my significant other, who said I probably imagined it, especially since that window was so high up no one would be able to reach it from the outside. Our house is on stumps. I made him go back out there and, yeah, someone had gone to our shed, which was a good 500 meters away from the house, got some wooden pallets, stacked them up, and peeped through my window. If it were a random peeper in an easier accessible location like a suburb, It probably would have weirded me out a little, but then I'd get over it. But the amount of work this guy had to go through makes me remember him to this day. I wonder how the hell he got out there with no car. Did he just live on our property or nearby in the brush somewhere? 
Redditor BHS Grad 2015 says, When I was younger, about five, me and my family lived in a big house that was in the woods. My bedroom was on the first floor with a window about 15 feet wide and six feet tall. Huge window. It was so oddly large that we could never find curtains or blinds for it, so I just had a bare window, which was fine because, like I said, we were in the middle of the woods. I woke up in the middle of the night with that feeling of being watched, and I saw a man wearing all black standing at my window watching me. I screamed, and when I did, he ran off into the woods. From Redditor, it's me, Kathy. When I was young, my grandmother lived in a very rural part of Ireland, and my brother and I were sent to visit her for a couple of weeks every summer. Frequently, my grandmother would send us out to do little jobs for her, bring bread or jam to the neighbors or to collect turf for the fire. One summer's day, she gave me a loaf of bread and sent me to a house about three or four miles away. The laneway to the house was narrow and lined by thick hedges, and as I was walking, I became aware of a man within the hedges who was watching me and walking the laneway with me. I was extremely frightened and ran the rest of the way. I think the woman of the house knew something had frightened me when I arrived. She made me tea and sandwiches with my grandmother's bread and let me stay and play with her dogs until her eldest son got back so that he could drive me back to my grandmother's house. Thank you, Mrs. Staunton. I still don't know who it was that was watching and following me or how long they'd been doing so before I noticed. Redditor Jimbo B6886 My grandparents house is right outside of town. A neighborhood is on one side, but on all the other sides everyone has an acre or two that they're sitting on, including my grandparents. So isolated-ish. A friend and I were smoking cigarettes in the large enclosed porch one night when nobody was home, and in the complete silence we heard a really loud pig squeal right next to us. It sounded like it was in the enclosed area with us. It was that loud. Sure, people have horses and chickens around. I don't think any neighbors owned pigs, though. It also didn't quite sound like a pig. It was more like a man making a pig noise. I can't emphasize that enough. It was one of the weirdest sounds I've ever heard. The scariest thing was how displaced the sound was. I mean, even if their next-door neighbor had a pig, it would have been far enough away to be a lot quieter. We bolted inside and locked the door immediately. Redditor Jesus Lice My significant other and I lived in a small cabin up in the Appalachian Mountains on an isolated 40-acre plot. It was our first week in the cabin. Sometime in the middle of the night, we heard a blood-curdling scream right outside the window, not just once, but over and over again for about a minute. From Redditor Overused Memes My dad owns a plot of land in south-central Illinois. It consists of crop fields and woods. My dad's nephew, call him T, and his wife B live in a trailer next to an auction barn they own. One night B was home alone. Their porch faces the road and they have a street light by their circle drive, on their ground, not the road. B saw a silhouette walk across the porch, his shadow visible on the door window. She later heard scratching on the screen of a window. She'd had enough. She grabbed T's handgun and opened the door. There was no car in the circle drive other than her own. She screamed something like, I got a gun and I'm not afraid to kill you. The scratching stopped. From Redditor Blue KC. When I was about 13 and exploring the woods, I found a pillowcase with a jewelry box, a bunch of cheap kids' jewelry, a couple of keychains, a school idea for a girl in fourth grade, and a couple other little girl things. I didn't think much of it at the moment, but a couple of days later I went back to get it, and it was gone. I still wish I could remember the girl's name or even the school she went to because I have a feeling something horrible happened. I grew up in the foothills of the Sierra Nevadas, ten miles outside of a town that doesn't even have a stoplight, 
just so you guys have a picture of how rural this was. The scariest sound I've ever heard is a mountain lion's scream. You can never get used to that sound. Redditor Mr. Curtis Lowe So I live in a very heavily wooded area. This is a place where the closest town is seven miles away, and it's only got about a hundred people in it, so my family and the few neighbors we have are very secluded. Anyway, when I was about twelve-ish, I was sitting on my front porch, eating mac and cheese because it was a nice day out. While I'm eating, I notice something sort of strange in the woods in front of our house. I'd sat on my front porch so many times that I was used to how the view looked, so I immediately noticed that the view looked different. Probably about 150 feet in front of our house was a giant black mass. At first I thought it may be a, a black bear, as they are fairly common here. Being the adventurous kid I was, I went to investigate. As I got close to it, I could see that it was actually a giant burnt black stump, root wad and all. It had been totally scorched, so the entire thing was pitch black and it was massive. It easily weighed 200 pounds. And this was strange, as we hadn't cut down any trees lately, and we certainly hadn't burned out any stumps. I showed my mom, and she was equally as confused, but just kind of brushed it off. After school the next day, I went to check on it again with my dogs, but when I got to the spot, it was gone. A giant 200-pound stump had just vanished, and there were no drag marks or anything. From Redditor Kelsey I used to live in the middle of nowhere. We had one neighbor whose house we couldn't even see through the trees and hills. On the other side of us, up another hill, there was a dirt road that basically went nowhere. At the beginning of the dirt road, there was this old abandoned church, which made it automatically creepy. Anyway, berries used to grow down this dirt road, so we'd go pick them. On the way back one day, we got an extremely strong scent of cologne. A quick scan didn't show anyone, but every time the wind blew, we got another whiff. Still don't know where the scent was coming from, but it creeped me out big time. You don't think about how no one can hear you scream until you're forced to. From Redditor For the Love of Fiber I live out in the country. There are maybe five houses on my long dirt road. Last week, my neighbor asked if he could come over to talk to us about something. He didn't knock, just walked right in and had a loaded gun with him. He started talking a mile a minute about a war coming to our road, knowing people who are 300 years old, vampires walking out of the woods, being able to see the Matrix code, etc. He had a hospital bracelet on his wrist. Turns out he decided to go off his medication and was in a manic depressive state. From Redditor Pumpmar As a kid, we had free range of the woods behind my friend's house. It was out pretty much in the middle of nowhere, and we could go out there for hours and never see another soul. One time, one of the younger kids ran straight into some barbed wire and got his whole front cut up because he hadn't been wearing a shirt. It was really weird because this was just in the middle of the woods, so why was there barbed wire hung at the height a seven-year-old could run into? From Redditor Captain Nemo 95 I live by the Adriatic coast of Italy. One summer night in 2013, I was with some friends on the beach having a party when at around 1 a.m. I climbed the rocks to find a place to pee, and there was a full moon and I could see very clearly. I walked away from the beach until I saw a small cove, a small sandy bay invisible from the inland but easily reachable from the rocks. I thought it was the best spot to relieve my bladder and went there. As I neared, I distinctly saw that there was a man, a fat, very big man in his fifties, sitting in the sand doing absolutely nothing, his head tucked in his arms. I should have known better, but I moved closer and asked if he needed anything thinking he might have been feeling unwell. He raised this bull-like head and started screaming madly to get away from him lest he killed me by cracking your head on the rocks. I scrambled and ran like crazy back to my friends. 
I turned backwards and I was relieved to find that he was not following me. We called the police, who came and discovered that he was a mentally ill person who had not taken his medications and his family had declared him missing that afternoon. They managed to reassure him without resorting to violence and escorted him back to his habitation. It was the only time that I really feared for my life. People who work in the wilderness are just as apt to have spooky experiences as those who live there, and coming up, we'll hear a few stories from park rangers who in many cases were scared stiffer than the trees that surround them. While you're listening, be sure to check out WeirdDarkness.com for merchandise, to visit sponsors you hear about during the show, sign up for my newsletter, enter contests, connect with me on social media, hear other podcasts that I host, listen to free audiobooks I've narrated. Plus, you can visit the Hope in the Darkness page if you're struggling with depression, dark thoughts, or addiction. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. When Salem Roanoke took a job near his family's new home as a hired hand in the Texas Hill Country, he anticipated learning the rancher's trade, but a series of strange events, shocking murders, and unholy revelations divert him down another path. This terrifying trajectory puts him directly into the middle of a struggle between monsters, magic, and men. Armed and backed by a militia of ranchers, Salem attempts to combat the creeping tide of evil that threatens to engulf his new home and destroy the people most important to him. Will Salem manage to save his home, or have his actions condemn everyone he hopes to save? The Witch Trials – A Summer of Wolves and Season of the Witch by S. R. Roanoke Available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook versions. Look for The Witch Trials by S. R. Roanoke on Amazon or find it on the audiobooks page at WeirdDarkness.com. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash audiobooks. We've all been frightened by things that go bump in the night, but imagine hearing those scary sounds isolated in a forest, miles away from mankind and any sort of salvation. That's the reality for many park rangers. Rangers are often left to venture out and care for parks on their own, often going weeks or months without interacting with another human being. In that quiet time, some pretty creepy things can happen out in the wilderness. We hiked over to Reddit, where we found some of the creepiest things park rangers have seen or experienced. From nature at its roughest to unexplained phenomena, these tales might make you want to trade in your tent for good. Redditor Senor Puppy Pants said, I once led a trip to the top of Mount Sterling in North Carolina. It's a tough climb to get to the top and about six miles from the nearest road. I was leading a group of eight middle school kids and had one co-instructor. We were camping out on top of the mountain and it was a beautiful night with a full moon. The kids and the other co-instructor went to bed in their tents. I chose to spend the night in a hammock that night. I was really into a book that I was reading so I stayed up and I read until about 10.30 p.m. I turned my headlamp off to settle in for the night. Everything around me was rather bright from the moon and from the position I was in. I could see down the trail we had hiked to get to the top. I laid there, enjoying the scenery and noticed something moving on the trail. Bears are common in the area, so I perked up. As it got closer, though, I could tell it was a person. We were in the middle of nowhere and there was someone hiking up the trail with no headlamp or any gear. I was just frozen, watching this person move closer to our camp. They arrived at the top of the mountain where we were and just stopped. I watched as what appeared to be a man surveying our camp. I really could only see the outline of him. He stood there for what seemed like 30 minutes but may have been just 10. He then turned and sat down under a tree facing our camp. 
He was sitting up in a way that I knew he wasn't trying to sleep. He just sat there, staring at our camp. I had no idea what to do, so I decided to wait it out. I waited, just staring at the man while he stared at my camp. This went on till about 3.30 in the morning. And then he stood up, took a moment to survey my camp a few minutes longer, and then went back down the trail that he came up from. I to this day have no idea what that was all about, but it freaked me out. I was paranoid that we were being followed for the rest of the trip. Redditor Homeless Homie I saw a human thumb nailed to a tree. Redditor Genesis Protech There was a group of teens that hadn't been heard from after their scheduled return time from a camping trip. A co-worker and I head out in the general direction the teens had set off in. We've been hiking for most of the day and seen nothing. We're about 35 kilometers into the wood at this point when we start noticing odd things. Sticks carved like spears stuck into the ground. Weird carvings in the trees. A child's stuffed animal hanging from a noose up in a tree. This place was nowhere near any roads. It wasn't on the regular trails people would go on in the area. The really eerie thing was that everything was freshly carved. Somebody had been there within a couple of hours of us and made these things. Mind you, we're still looking for these teens. We kept on hiking and eventually made camp for the night, still kind of on edge from what we had seen earlier, but we settle down anyway and go to sleep. We get up at the sunrise, hoping to cover more ground before it gets too hot. We pack up the gear and get ready to go when I notice a bit of shirt that had caught on a small tree and ripped, along with some shoe prints. We were thinking, great, maybe we're close by to the teens, when a radio call comes in. The teens had just been found, 20 kilometers east of us, and they're calling everybody back. All those weird things we had seen from the day before came flooding back into my mind and we wasted no time hiking out of those woods. From Redditor Ripeot Cdexfi. I'm a ranger at Yellowstone. A couple weeks ago, I was exploring the Lamar Valley about 11 miles from the nearest road and even further to the park boundary. There, in the middle of the trail, is a perfectly severed deer head. No blood. No raggedness at the severance. Perfectly intact. This is weird because I've seen wolf and bear spoils, and I'm used to finding cougar prey remains in South Dakota with radio tracking just after the cougar made them. This was not any of those things. The head was completely uneaten. Eyes, tongue, everything intact. Even the ravens hadn't touched it. No caching, no droppings, right smack in the trail, but again, no blood. Even a human doing it made no conventional sense. It was a doe, so it had no antlers. Plus, why leave it in the trail? Whole thing, even in broad daylight, gave me chills. Just an ocean of waving grass, bison calmly grazing, and a perfectly clean deer head right on the path. From Redditor, The Copy-Paste Life our park lets kids from school in so they can look for animals in the forest and the streams. One day, a kid finds molars. The teeth looked like human molars, but the teacher said that they were a deer's molars. I dismissed it and completely forgot about it. Two days later, they found a corpse with a smashed skull and a jaw in another part of the park. All its teeth were missing. A local newspaper covered it, but all they had to say was, thank the spooky skeletons for good bones and teeth. From a former Redditor, a shed behind an abandoned house with a steel-reinforced door broken off the hinges. The windows of the shed were boarded up from the outside. The only thing inside the shed was a queen-size bed with shredded, partly singed white sheets. Redditor Rogue Leader 096 I found a deceased man in a tree. I'm a seasonal ranger for my local forest district. The rest of the rangers say we find about one self-harm victim a year, so here was the one for the year. When we go around opening parks each day, 
we drive through to make sure everything's okay. In this instance, I was driving through and had just lost sight of the road when I saw a man hanging from a tree in a clearing. He had hung himself. I called the cops, the medical examiner took an hour to show up, and he was the only one with a ladder long enough to cut the guy down. So I stared at a deceased guy in a tree for an hour. From Redditor Smokey the Marshmallow The scariest experience I had as a backcountry park ranger in Washington State was being stalked by a cougar for a day and a half. I was hiking up an unpopular trail up to an old shelter and had that creepy being-watched feeling. I had seen fairly fresh cougar scratches and droppings along the trail, but that's pretty common up here, so I wasn't worried at all. That night, I camped at the shelter, which only had three walls and a roof. I felt uneasy all night and hardly slept. At one point, chiding myself for being paranoid, I arranged my emergency foil tarp around my sleeping bag so at least I could hopefully hear something if it approached me as I slept. The next day, I found fresh droppings and scratches on the trail that I had hiked in on. About a mile past the shelter, I found a mostly eaten deer in some dense brush off the trail. Cougars often keep deceased prey stashes throughout their territory for later snacking. Now, a cougar won't usually tangle with a human, but here I am, a five-foot-tall, 100-pound sack of flesh and bones at least 13 miles out from any other humans. I decided to cut short my three-day trip and I hot-footed it out of there. The last two hours of hiking through dusk in a dense forest was the most hair-raising hike I've ever had. I didn't know I was capable of being that hyper-vigilant. From Redditor Tinge of the Jing I was surveying a remote restoration site near an old trail and I heard someone walking up a nearby path. All the hair on the back of my neck stood on end, so I grabbed all my stuff and started casually walking down the trail like I belonged there. I turned the corner and there was a shirtless guy swinging a crowbar around in circles and when he saw me he started yelling, I've got a crowbar! i got a crowbar! I think I nodded at him, squeaked something like, nice crowbar, and then ran the mile or so back to my truck. From Redditor Felicity Bad Porn Camping 80-plus miles from anything resembling civilization. Lying in the tent, talking before falling asleep, when all of a sudden a shot rings out no more than 100 yards away. Then hearing the sound slowly travel away, then quiet. A former Redditor, U.S. Forest Service here. Dog skeleton, still leashed to a tree, bullet hole in skull. From Redditor, not so single buck. The oddest thing, that is, my unsolved mystery, was the abandoned camp next to the trail. Camping outside of designated campsites is a big no no, and I was surprised as all get out walking around the corner one day and find a tent set up directly next to the trail. The trail ran along a nice stream and was a very tranquil spot. Inside, I found a cloth sleeping bag some dirty clothes, lots of food, big cans of SpaghettiOs and what looked like some leftovers from refried beans and rice dinners, and a teddy bear. Everything reeked of cigarette smoke. I was reticent to confiscate everything and leave the individual out there with nothing, but I did take all the food and pack it into a secure food storage box along the way back to my cabin. I left a note explaining where I had taken the food and that they needed to move camp. I was unable to return to the tent for two weeks, way too long to leave it sitting there next to the trail. It was basically untouched when I returned. Some trail crew folks had checked it out and let me know, but that was probably it. I packed up the rest and hauled it out. I spent some time poking around the area but never saw any other signs of life. It was obvious somebody who was not prepared for camping out in the back country, judging by the food, equipment, and the teddy bear. I just don't know. Everything, clothing, gear, etc., it indicated just one individual. From Redditor and Rages I've been a ranger in the southern Canadian Rockies for a few years. One Sunday morning I was doing my daily patrols, saw some smoke from afar, 
and thought I would check it out. When I arrived on the scene, there was a group of people half-naked, only sexual parts exposed, dressed up as animals, all curled up in a ball passed out on the ground. Probably one of the weirdest things I have come across. From Redditor Infamous 5 We're in the middle of nowhere, no other humans for at least 40 kilometers, and we're hearing this unearthly shrieking sound. We run out into the forest, heading downhill to the lowlands next to the river, and watched as a group of maybe six wolves chased down a bull moose. The animal had a massive gash in its side. It had been gored by yet another predator which was following from the rear, a full-grown male grizzly bear. I thought I was watching a movie, like one of those things you only see in nature documentaries. We followed from a distance of maybe 250 meters, while the bull moose desperately tried to cross the river. It didn't make it. The wolves descended on their prey, dragging it onto the shore while it was still kicking and shrieking in agony. The wolves didn't get their prize for long, as the grizzly was done watching and charged the pack of wolves, which broke up at the first charge, then attacked. The massive bear broke two of the pack against the ground, then the others slinked back into the woods. They didn't go far from the prey, well, the prey's remains, knowing the bear would have its fill, and then they would have theirs, sooner or later. It was a battle that you only hear about from First Nations. That was the moment I realized why we were not the top of the food chain at that moment. From Redditor Zoe I saw the remains of a plane that had crashed into a cliff. Found out later that it went down a few years before, and there just never been the proper resources to remove the wreckage. But finding a plane, you know, people have perished in, is weird. Redditor Shiny Brine My scariest wilderness encounter was at about 2 a.m. while maintaining fire line on a 300-acre fire caused by a lightning strike. I needed to take a pee, and the rule is you do not urinate on the fire, so I walked over towards a stump outside the fire line. I was about 50 feet away from that stump when the stump walked away. It was a black bear. From Redditor Radio VSTV I was out camping in the middle of nowhere, and just before dawn I heard this huge boom that woke me out of my sleep. I packed up for a hike and set out towards the sound. After about a five-kilometer hike, I found the smoldering remains of what I think was a moonshine still. It could have been a meth lab. There was at least one very mangled body, but it looked like one guy got out in one piece. From Redditor Kalgula While out in full fog, My friend and I figured we were the only people silly enough to go for a hike in the cold rain and fog. There was one other truck in the parking lot when we arrived. Well, after a few miles in, near the top of the mountain we were climbing, we found the guy. He was in his underwear and had a pillow and a walking stick. That was it. I don't know if we interrupted his nap, but he got up and left when we came upon him. From Redditor Beards Up the Wazoo the pickup truck that had been driven off the 1200 road up in the Cascade Mountains above Washougal. It was totaled. I hiked down to it and checked it out. No signs of injury, so maybe it was just pushed down after being stolen. But behind the truck's seat was a used pair of women's panties. I called the cops with its location. Don't know whatever came of it. From Redditor Bob Dylan's Dog Working as a ranger in western Queensland, I saw three wedge-tailed eagles rounding up some feral goats. It looked like Mum and Dad were teaching Junior how to pick the weak goat, diving down on them and separating the weak young from their parents. Finally, the large eagles were picking up the young kid on their fly-through, lifting it up a couple of meters and then dropping it. Not supernatural, just strange and cool. You don't have to live or work in the wilderness to have a terrifying experience. Simply visiting there to experience the nature can turn creepy, as many backpackers have found out. We'll share some of their stories up next.
If you like what you're hearing on Weird Darkness, please share it with someone you know who loves the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, or unsolved mysteries like you do. You can email me and follow me on social media through the Weird Darkness website. WeirdDarkness.com is also where you can find information on sponsors you heard during the show, listen to free audiobooks I've narrated, get the email newsletter, find other podcasts that I host. You can visit the store for creepy and cool Weird Darkness merchandise. Plus, it's where you can find the Hope in the Darkness page if you or someone you know is struggling with depression, addiction, or thoughts of harming yourself or others. And if you have a true paranormal or creepy tale to tell of your own, you can click on Tell Your Story. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. Will NASA help Scotland search for the Loch Ness Monster? Is it possible that time doesn't really exist? Can you find true love and marriage with a ghost? How can a pothole revive the dead? These are just some of the questions I have in my new YouTube series, Mind of Marler. It's full of the strange and macabre as you'd expect from my Weird Darkness podcast, but with an added twist of humor, satire, and absurdity. If you like comedy and creepiness, check out Mind of Marler on YouTube or visit WeirdDarkness.com slash Mind of Marler. Everyone loves scary stories, right? Especially when they are purported to be true. And the desolation of backpacking it just lends itself so well to weird occurrences. These creepy backpacking tales will make you question if you really need to do a solo trip through Europe to find yourself. Watching the Travel Channel might be a safer route to take. Some of the people in these stories were exploring new countries. Others were just exploring nature for a few days but these backpackers have some truly terrifying and strange stories to tell. Reddit user CMVR2256 told a terrifying story about backpacking in the Alabama wilderness with his brother. He was 12 at the time. His brother was 26. They were on their third night in the woods when two strangers wandered into their camp, asking if they had seen any wild hogs. In fact, he and his brother had seen some because wild hogs were common in the area and they told the strangers where they had last seen the animals. The two guys hung around a bit longer, then left. They gave the Redditor a weird vibe, but nothing he or his brother thought much of. He and his brother went to sleep in their tent that night, sometime near midnight, and were awoken by the sound of shouting and dogs barking. The sounds were close, only about a hundred yards away. His brother heard the dogs too, but said it was probably the guys from before. It's common to use dogs to hold hogs down when hunting. Hunting for hogs at night is definitely strange, but at least it's a somewhat rational explanation, right? Fast forward what was probably another three hours around 2 a.m. I'd managed to sleep pretty well, the Redditor said, after first hearing the hog hunters when I woke up to my brother squeezing my shoulder firmly saying, wake up, put your shoes on, quick, and follow me, be as quiet as you can. They climb up a hill overlooking their campsite and hide in some bushes watching. The Redditor continues, The group of hunters had been steadily approaching our camp and by this time 30 or so minutes had reached it. There were five of them and like three or four dogs. They all looked relatively young but two had either rifles or shotguns and the dogs were going crazy, obviously having smelled our scent. We laid there for a while longer when out of nowhere they started screaming, Where are you all at? and firing into the woods at random. My brother dragged me back behind the crest of the hill and threw himself on top of me. Thankfully, in our position on top of the hill, we were protected from any gunfire. They shot maybe five or six more times and then started walking back the direction they'd come. They got maybe a hundred yards away when I heard a blaring siren and saw emergency lights flashing through the woods. Turns out my brother had called the Forest Service office on a satellite phone my family has for emergencies while I was asleep, and they had sent out Forest Service officers and game wardens to our area of the wilderness. We never found out if the hunters were caught. Lady Emery was backpacking through Asia. She was supposed to take a plane from Malaysia to Singapore to start the next leg of her trip, 
but she missed her flight and had to take a bus instead. It was dirty and covered in cockroaches, but she figured that she could deal with it for a few hours. She says, "...the man next to me was Asian, around late 30s to early 40s. He was very interested in me, asking me many questions about where I was going. I told him Singapore. Was I alone? Where would I be staying? How old I was? Did I have a boyfriend?" I made awkward but polite small talk with him, making up a fictional boyfriend. Eventually it got late and we both tried to get some sleep. Fear of the cockroaches kept me awake, though, so I spent an hour or so just lying there with my eyes closed attempting sleep when I felt a hand brush against my left thigh. I ignored it, since maybe it was an accident. Maybe his hand had just slipped from the armrest? But I felt it again, squeezing my leg. Then the hand moved to my right thigh. Ah, not an accident. I told him to stop touching me. Thankfully, he did. I managed to get a tiny bit of sleep, then awoke at 6.30 when the bus stopped. The man shook my shoulder and told me, "'Come on, get out! It's Singapore!' The time seemed right, so groggy, I hopped off the bus and went up to the bus conductor to get my luggage. Luckily for me, he remembered I was traveling to Singapore. As he told me to get back on the bus, this was still Malaysia. We had not crossed the border yet. Singapore was the next stop. I turned around to see the man staring at me from a large group of men clustering around the bus and very quickly boarded the bus again. As we drove away, I wondered if he had done that deliberately. And then I remembered that I had told him Singapore was my destination the night before. He knew this wasn't Singapore. The story almost ended with, and no one ever saw Lady Emery again. Redditor Macintosh Eddy shared a weird tale from July 2015. I was just camping last weekend, and when I woke up the next morning, someone had unzipped my rain fly the wrong way. It seems kind of unlikely that I woke up in the night, unzipped the tent, unzipped the rain fly, then re-zipped the tent and fell back asleep without noticing it. I would blame the dog, but he was sleeping in the camper. Not sure if the conservation officers would ever be unzipping things at night, Okay, then. Don't know why somebody would want to try and soak a backpacker, their tent, and all of their belongings, but I also don't really want to find out. Sometimes a friend of a friend can be even creepier than a total stranger. In this case, Redditor Beloved Life and her boyfriend arranged to spend a night with a relative of one of her friends while backpacking through Germany. So we arrive at this house and knock on the door, and a scary old lady opens up looking puzzled. We explained that we spoke with her husband and were friends with his relative. She leads us in. The whole situation is strange and scary. After a couple of minutes, her husband arrives and we sit with him and talk a bit over tea. When nighttime arrives, he leads us to the basement. We go down the stairs and he explains where everything is, and then he goes up the stairs and locks the door behind him. That was my scariest night ever. We didn't sleep at all that night, thinking horrible thoughts of what might be. But then morning came, and we heard the door unlock. We jumped up and ran out of that house and never looked back. Redditor C6 Squid was kidnapped while backpacking through Africa. Yes, kidnapped. Here's their story. I was stranded in Zimbabwe with no money, working my way across the country. I made some friends, and we went out one night to a bar. I was the only white person and one of very few females there. Had a blast, though. My friends were watching out for me while I was in the bathroom, but as I was coming out, some other guys grabbed me and threw me into the trunk of a car and knocked me out. I woke up later to find myself locked in a dark room, voices outside, not in English. A couple hours pass, who knows how long. A guy comes in with a gun screaming at me in Shona. Mind you, I have no clue what the hell's going on. He grabs me, still waving that freaking gun in my face, and throws me outside. My friends are there, apparently negotiating my release. I get butted by the gun and wake up at my friend's house. No clue what happened. Still, to this day, my friends won't even tell me now what exactly happened. Redditor Waffle Hump calls this story Lakeside Lunatic, and it's not hard to understand why. He and a buddy were backpacking through the Adirondacks when they had an encounter with someone. Creeper doesn't even begin to describe this guy. 
We hiked about five miles into a small lake and set up camp on a small beach. This was not a heavily trafficked area, and we did not expect to run into anyone. Our first night there, as we were sitting around the fire, we saw a flashlight moving on the other side of the lake around 10.30. This was fairly unusual, however we didn't think much of it. But as time went on, the flashlight kept moving around the lake, getting closer to our campsite. Once it was clear the person or people were heading for our campsite, we moved off into the woods nearby to see who wandered up. Now the moment of truth. The flashlight comes near the light of our fire. It's one man. He has a beard and he's probably in his mid-forties. The scary part was he was carrying what turned out to be a pump-action shotgun. He walked around the campsite a few times and then proceeded to enter our tent. After rummaging around for a minute or so, he came out and started yelling, I know you're out there, why don't you come out and say hello? My friend and I remained motionless under a hemlock tree about 50 yards away. That's when the man proceeded to fire his shotgun into the woods, not too far from where we were. He also swung his flashlight around several times. After what felt like hours, he grabbed my friend's backpack and a few articles of clothing we had drying off near the fire and threw them in to burn. Thankfully, the man moved off from where he had come after a little while. We waited until his flashlight was on the other side of the lake, ran out, grabbed everything we could fit in my pack, and took off. It was now around 2 or 3 in the morning. We immediately went to the police department and reported it, where we also spoke with some forest rangers. That was it. I haven't heard anything back from the police. A few years ago, Redditor Noah Carr went on a solo backpacking trip for five days and hiked more than 60 miles. I had brought a Kodak disposable camera with me on the trip, and I wanted to get my pictures developed as soon as I could because I was eager to show my friends and family the wildlife and gorgeous views I had seen. After a couple of days, I got a call from Costco where my pictures were being developed that I could come and pick them up. I didn't have the patience to wait to see all the pictures, so I opened the package up as soon as I got into my car. They'd come out wonderfully. And then I got the last set of pictures. There were 10 pictures I didn't remember taking. The pictures were of me sleeping in my tent. Somebody was in my tent. In February of 2015, Redditor Erojafara found a notebook at a hostel while backpacking through Peru. It was a collection of traveler stories, and the first entry asked each person who wrote in the notebook to hold on to it for no more than two weeks, then pass it along to another traveler. The first five entries were normal backpacking stories. The sixth entry, however, was different. The sixth entry in the book was written on Valentine's Day 2016, the narrator wrote that he had grown up on a farm in Nebraska, dropped out of high school, and gotten a job at a slaughterhouse to pass the time. His father was an alcoholic, and his mother had taken off a few years before. And then a new family moved in next door. So this family moves into the next farm over, the writer says, maybe a half dozen acres away. There was Daddy Genlin, Tom, I think, his fat wife Leslie, and the two daughters, Marilyn and Martha. The whole clan moved in with a half dozen dogs. Two of them were enormous animals, black lab mastiff crosses with heads the size of propane tanks. Scary, loud animals. But like I told you, I was working a lot and didn't get a chance to meet them really. The girls were about six and ten years old. And the dogs? As the narrator discovered, they were loud. The first night after the Genlins moved in, they would not stop barking. So Papa Genlin comes over to the narrator's farm and talks to the narrator's dad. Kenlin says the dogs only bark when they are threatened, and he doesn't know what was up with them last night, but it won't happen again. The next night, the dogs are barking again, the narrator says. Papa Genlin comes over the next morning, says he found blood on his property line. His dogs were fine, but he couldn't figure out what they tore into. There was no carcass, no trace of what had left the blood. He asked if there were any local dogs that might have wandered onto his farm. The narrator's dad says no there are no other dogs around. Papa Genlin moves on. The narrator goes to work, comes home, and sleeps through the night, no dogs barking. The next day, all his co-workers are talking about the Genlins. Someone had broken into their house overnight and slaughtered them all. 
The youngest girl wasn't found until months later, her body mostly disintegrated in a cornfield. The cops came and talked to me and Dad about it a few times, the narrator continued to write. They made a big deal about Daddy Ginland's visits. They stopped coming around after a while, though. They didn't arrest anyone on account of the killing. The cops, I mean. They kept asking the dumbest question, too. They thought it was so strange that the dogs would make all that noise for the first two days and just sit quiet the night of the killings. They were all fine, by the way, the dogs. I mean, not a scratch on them. Personally, I don't trust dogs much in matters of personal security. Anyone can make friends with them. All you need is a little meat. What happened to Redditor Orla Kid's horse found while backpacking through Yellowstone National Park? We can only guess. I was backpacking in Yellowstone above the tree line at about 10,500 feet. We were hiking on a ridge above a lake when all of a sudden we came across a horse skull. No body, just the skull. Pretty cool looking. We get to our campsite not too far away from the lake near where we found the horse skull. When we climb down to the lake, we find the body of the horse rotting on the edge of the lake with negative film strips floating in the water and laying around the shore near the body. Redditor Liason Guy backpacked across China and came home with a story he will never forget. I was backpacking in western China and ran across a military rocket cached at an abandoned campsite in an area with a fairly large anti-Chinese, terror-oriented nomadic population. I noped out of there as fast as I could. Redditor Nocturnal Lark was backpacking through eastern Washington and found a cave which can accurately be described as being full of nightmares. A few years ago, he says, I was backpacking in eastern Washington with some friends of mine. I don't know how well you guys know eastern Washington, but it's pretty much dust, sagebrush, and dirt. We decided to hike up onto the top of this canyon, and from up there you could see miles and miles of straight nothing. After a few hours of traversing the top of the cliff, we eventually found a little crevice that kind of took us a little ways underground into a pretty decent-sized cave. The cave was filled with little bones like mice and bats. In one of the corners of the cave, there was a rock fixture that jutted up from the ground and almost made a separate room, so to speak. In the room, we found lots of scratches on the walls, photographs, and three bottles with notes in them. While this was kind of off-putting on its own, we figured it was just some sort of joke and we'd find silly SOS notes in the bottle. The scariest part about it was the photographs were super ordinary, of families and normal people, and two of the notes in the bottles made no sense at all. While it was English, it was pretty much straight gibberish. None of the words made sense in context with the other words. The third bottle had a super ordinary letter talking about what they've been up to, something you'd send to a fairly distant relative after not talking with them for a while. I don't really know what to think of it all. I feel like it could easily have been someone just joking around, but it was almost too strange for that. Apparently, Redditor Squidward's friend doesn't find Care Bears all that comforting, though in this instance it makes sense why they would be so scared of a children's toy. They said, It was just me and a buddy backpacking. After hiking all day, we found a good spot next to the creek to set up the tent before it got dark. We got everything set up, made a fire, cooked some food, then sat around and talked before going to sleep. My point here is that we'd spend a good amount of time in the area and shouldn't have seen anything weird laying around. I was first to wake up and leave the tent in the morning. We set it up with the door facing the creek. First thing I saw when I unzipped the door was a blue, dirty, stuffed bear. It looked like an old Care Bear sitting on a rock next to the creek. It was positioned sitting up and facing our tent. Obviously, at that point, I was freaked out. I woke my buddy up, who was equally as freaked out when he saw it. No way my friend did it, either. I was last asleep and first awake, and he was just as creeped out as I was, I could tell. We never heard anything weird that night no one bothered us, and none of our stuff was messed with. We cut the trip two days short and headed back to the car, another reason I'm sure he didn't do it. Best explanation I have is that a creeper was watching us from back in the tree line 
and we had absolutely no clue, which is a pretty sobering thought. Redditor Green Eggs Con Ham seems a little flippant about their mother nearly being assaulted while on a solo backpacking trip. Here's their story. My mom in her 20s was a huge hiker and backpacker. On one solo hike at a local mountain after hiking a few miles to the point where there's not many people and it's fairly secluded, she heard a voice from off the trail. Something like, come here, pretty mama. An older man in a dirty, baggy jacket with no pants or underwear came sprinting out of the bushes after her. She turned, ran, and got away fine. Sure makes a hell of a story to tell, though. Redditor, the number 10, had a great time backpacking across America, saying, I backpacked from California to New York. I saw enough weird stuff to fill a bucket. On my second day out, I was hiking through some bushes, looking for a place to camp, and I found a compound. Two trailers, both beat up and worn down to the point of questionable livability, numerous junked vehicles, and a shed. On the shed, it said in huge spray-painted letters, steal from me and… and then a crudely drawn skull and crossbones. I found somewhere else to camp. A Reddit user told a truly terrifying story about their friend who was backpacking deep in the woods. A good friend of mine was backpacking about 10 years ago when he found a cell phone deep in the woods that was still powered on with half a battery. There was nothing else around it or anyone nearby that it could have belonged to. He found it just far enough off of a trail that it very likely could have been thrown there. The last number dialed was 911. He turned it in to the police, but nothing ever came of it that I can recall. Thanks for listening. If you like the podcast, please share a link to this episode and recommend Weird Darkness to your friends, family, and co-workers who love the paranormal, horror stories, or true crime like you do. All stories in Weird Darkness are purported to be true unless stated otherwise, and you can find source links or links to the authors in the show notes. And now that we're coming out of the dark, I'll leave you with a little light. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. John 15 verses 12 and 13. And a final thought, Every time you smile at someone, it is an action of love, a gift to that person, a beautiful thing. Mother Teresa I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me in the Weird Darkness.